Yes, I'd like to welcome each and every one to another Because He Loved Me broadcast. This is Brother Lonnie Davis, and I hope and pray that you're having a good day in the Lord today. We've got much to pray about today. Let's remember our nation. Let's continue to pray for it, and let's pray for all the live in. And uh, most of all, let's pray for the ones that's sick and shut in, and uh, and the ones that's lost and don't know the, the Lord and a free pardon of sin. And uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer right now, and we'll, we'll uh, give some announcements here in a little bit and everything. But uh, I just feel there's a great need to pray right now. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, as we bow in Your presence, God, we thank and we praise You, Father. God, just for another opportunity, God, just come down to this old-fashioned radio station, Father, and stand up behind this mic. And God, by faith, God, just read Your blessed Word. And Father, we're just putting everything in Your hand, God, that You'd take care of every situation, Father, that 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 uh, has a need this afternoon, Father. The ones that uh, Lord that's listening to my voice this afternoon, Father, you know their need before God that we ever even ask, Father, if it's spiritual, Lord, if it's uh, Lord, it's a physical, God, just whatever need it might be financially, God, you said that you'd supply each and every one of our needs, and God, we're praying, God, for each and every one, God, that's a listening to us this afternoon, God, I pray, Father, for the reading of your word, God, that you'd ever more bless it, God, you said an eyes. Isaiah chapter 55 and verse number 11. Father, it would not go out and return to you void that it accomplished that which that you pleased. Father, we're thankful, God, for that promise this afternoon. God, that we realize that, Lord, it's not in vain that, w- that we come down here and preach the blessed gospel of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God, that it touches hearts and lives and it changes people through and by the power of the Holy Ghost of God. Father, I pray right now, God, that you'd bless, you'd touch, and you'd move, God, in a special way. For it's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen and amen. If you have your Bibles this afternoon and want to read along with us, uh, we'd like to be reading in the book of uh, John and John chapter number 3. And before we read, I'd like to make just a a quick announcement here about a benefit singing for Jerry Harwood at the Barnersville School, and it'll be at 6 p.m. on Saturday afternoon, and that'll be April the 27th. There'll be different uh, groups of singers. There'll be different events like uh, uh, cakewalks, and we'll be selling a few hot dogs, but uh, uh, the Harvest Time Trio will be with us, uh, the Shining Lights, uh, Bill Listen B Singers, and the White Family will also be with us, and um, just come to have a good time in the Lord. This is a special event uh, just to help this dear family out. They've, uh, uh, Brother Jerry, he's uh, had uh, uh, some medical problems, uh, 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 nerves and stuff like that, uh, as far as his uh, um, uh, physical, but um, but God is uh, moving and uh, working in a special way in that family, and just continue uh, to help uh, uh, help me pray for that family and and this situation, and and pray for the benefit, saying that that God had touch and move in a special way, and uh, want to say special thanks to Sister Helen that we go to church with up at Faith Independent Baptist Church. Uh, she helps us pray for the broadcast and uh, helps us a little bit financially, and just pray. That uh, that God would be with her and uh, and bless her in a special way. And if you have your Bibles, let's turn to John chapter number three and just read just a few passages of Scripture here, and uh, go as the Lord leads. In chapter number three, in the book of John, it says there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou dost, except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. I thank God for the reading of this portion of His Word. I'm thankful that we can look into God's Word and we can see that 
that whenever Jesus was uh, was walking among men and whenever he was uh, walking uh, the shores of Galilee and, and, and all of these different places and whenever he met people, uh, there was a change in people's lives. Why? Because of a spiritual birth. That's the reason Jesus was talking to this this uh, uh, ruler. He was um, uh, ruler of the synagogue. He was uh, he was a well known man in his area. But uh, he come to Jesus by night, a uh, needing something or another. He he knew that uh, that he had to ask Jesus this question. You know, how can a man see the kingdom of God? And Jesus was straight, and he was right to the point where he was saying, you must be born again. I'm glad that there's a spiritual birth that can take place in each and every one of our lives whenever we call upon the blessed name of Jesus. See, Nicodemus needed something or another. He knew that he had religion. He knew that uh, that he was a leader of the synagogue. He knew that, uh, that he was a well-known man in the community, but he was still lacking something in his life. And he was needing to talk to this man called Jesus. And you know what? Whenever... Hey, I got to testify just a little bit. Whenever I realized that I needed something or another in my life, you know what? I was always taken to church. They'd always sit me down and they'd read me uh, out of. Uh, uh, scriptures out of the Bible. They'd read to me John 3.16 and they'd also turn over there and they'd read Psalms uh, 23 and verse number 1 about the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. You know, they'd teach me about Zacchaeus and they'd teach me uh, about all the different stories that was in the Bible. But you know what? They was just they, they just learning me portions of the Bible and they was, they was teaching me Scripture. But you know what? I had never experienced the new birth that Jesus was telling Nicodemus about here. But I'm glad that blessed Friday night, amen, that the Holy Ghost of of God came uh, knocking at my heart's door and let me realize that, amen, there was something that I was needing in my life and it wasn't more education, it wasn't more money, and it wasn't more uh, fame and fortune. But you know what? He was telling me that you needed to be born again and that's exactly like Jesus was telling Nicodemus here. He was trying to tell him that it was a must that you was born again. You know, you can go and join every church in this country. You can put your, your name on cards and letters throughout the world. And you know what? It won't get you into heaven. You know what? You can give to every charity. You can help in every charity ball throughout the country. You can give everything that you've got in this walk of life to charity. And you know what? It'll never get you through the gates of heaven. It takes the new birth, being born again, washed in the precious blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's what gets the job done. Just calling upon Him, repenting of your sins, and asking Him to come into your heart and life. Amen. And I'm thankful for that. A spiritual birth. You know what? Whenever I was born into the Davis family, you know, they, they, it was up at Moore Mission Hospital and my mama brought me home and I was just a baby. You know what? I didn't know what was going on. I was totally dependent upon my mother to feed me, to bathe me, to, to clothe me, to keep me warm and, and, and everything that I needed in this walk of life. It was a, it was a, uh, well, fleshly birth and everything. You know what? They, and I can't remember nothing about it. They sometimes I sat down and I asked my mama, "How big was I whenever I was whenever I was born? What did I look like?" You know, and she'd take me to some kind of a photo album or something or another, and she'd show me pictures of whenever I was a, a little baby or whenever I was a little boy being you know raised up there at the house and everything. And I have to go back, amen, and and look at those just to remember. But you know what? Whenever I Get to whenever I get to looking at my spiritual birth, whenever I get to thinking about it, I don't have to go ask my mama, hey man, I don't have to go ask my daddy, I don't have to go ask my brother what I acted like or, or what I looked like whenever I was growing up. I'm glad that I can go back to an old fashioned altar right there at Grapevine Missionary Baptist Church and know whenever I knelt and asked Jesus to come into my heart and life and hey amen experience that new birth. Hey, I've never been the same since. And I hey and I hey I'll never be the same throughout eternity just because of this new birth. That's the reason Jesus was telling Nicodemus, Hey, you must be born again. It's a must to have that new spiritual birth. I have some more scripture to go along with that experiencing a spiritual birth. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ, is the Christ, is born of God, and everyone that loveth Him 
that begotten love love him also that is begotten of him. I'm glad that whenever we believe that Jesus Christ is born of God, uh, whenever we believe that he was that was uh, born of that virgin, hey man, and whenever he was begotten by his by his father and everything, whenever whenever we realize that that. Jesus Christ is God's only begotten Son. And I tell you what, we can start believing in the right direction. And I'm thankful for them for that. That comes from 1 John 5 and 1. Also over here uh, in John 1, 12 and 13, I want to read just a little bit of this. Also, but as many has received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. See, there's a birth that has to come from God Almighty. Not of the will of the flesh. You know what? If I was to do what this old fleshly man wanted to do, you know, I probably wouldn't be down here this afternoon. I'd probably be laying in the bed or resting or out gallivating around or doing something or another just to please what the flesh wanted to do. Amen? Probably smoke cigarettes and, and drink liquor and carouse up and down the road. But you know what? I'm thankful for the spiritual birth. I'm thankful for what God can do for us. And our lives. You know, whenever He whenever He gives us what we need, amen, we can shout to victory for the glory of God and amen, we can lay these earthly and fleshly things over to the side and say, thank God for the Spirit of God that we can walk in the light of God and to live in the love of God and do what God would have us to do in the last days that we live in. If you notice here, nor the will of the flesh nor the will of man. Hey man, we, there's a lot of times, hey, I gotta say this this afternoon. There's a lot of times we get caught up and worried about what man thinks about us. We get caught up in thinking about what the neighbor thinks about us. But what about God? What about the one that, hey man, that made heaven and earth? What about the one that come and, hey man, can knock at heart's door and let you realize that you're lost and on the road to hell and give you the opportunity to call upon the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ where you can experience a new birth in this walk of life. I thank God for the will of God today. I thank, amen, that I can read in God's Word here and know exactly whenever I'm in the will of God. I know whenever I'm treating my neighbor right. I know whenever I'm treating my family right. And I know whenever I'm treating God right. Why? Because of the spiritual birth that I've experienced in my life. Thank God for that. Therefore, if any man be in Christ... He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I'm thankful that the old man, it just dies out more and more and more every day. And I'm glad that your spiritual man can get stronger in the Lord every day that we live on this walk of life as long as we seek the things of God. That's the reason he said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of His righteousness and all of the things that be added unto you. I, hey, I... It was explained to to me this way one time. It's like two dogs, like the old Indian said. It's like two dogs. You have a you have one dog over here on one side is a is like a fleshly dog, and over here on the other side you have a spiritual dog. And it's whichever dog, hey man, that uh, that you feed the most is which one that's going to get the strongest. If this fleshly dog is being fed to all the things of this world, and all only thing that's ever taken care of is the fleshly dog over here, you know what? This fleshly dog is going to rise up against this spiritual one. You know what? He's going to devour him, and he's going to kill him out, and he ain't going to be able to do nothing. But you know what? On the other hand, it's the same way with a spiritual dog. Whenever, hey, whenever you whenever you feed that dog good meat of the Word, amen, and he grows strong spiritually, you know what? That spiritual dog can rise up and kill out that old earthly dog. And I'm thankful that we can we can have a spiritual diet in the day and time that we live in. We can eat from the meat of God's Word and, and rise up and be a witness into a lost and dying world. That we live in. Hey, I need to read just a little bit more Scripture. This is good. The spiritual birth. I'm glad that we can experience a spiritual birth in this walk of life. I'm glad that Jesus died on that old rugged cross. He really died. Jesus really died. He he hung His head and He said He's finished. And whenever He hung His head and said He's finished, you know what? They took His body down off of that old rugged cross and they, they wrapped Him in, in grave linens and they placed Him in Joseph's barred tomb 
Amen. And they rolled the stone up on it. And he was really dead. But you know what? I'm glad that he didn't stay in that grave. I'm glad that whenever whenever they put him in that old empty in that tomb, you know what? He went into the heart of the earth and he hey he defeated Satan. Amen. And he conquered death, hell and the grave, and he got the keys. You know what? Whenever we get to standing up uh, telling what that Satan does to us and everything, you know what? I, I hey he don't own the keys to his house. Jesus already won that victory for me, and I'm just gonna go ahead and shout the victory because you know why? Whenever he got the keys of death, hell, and the grave, he come and amen. The angel of the Lord rolled the stone away and let everybody see that he was a risen Savior and he's alive and he's doing well today and he's seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding prayers for me today. Why? Because of this spiritual birth. He said it was expedient that he go away. And if he didn't go away, the Comforter could not come again. I'm glad that he rose, amen, and went up in a cloud of glory, amen. And whenever he was seated at the right hand of the Father, you know what? That Comforter, it came back. And it met with him on the day of Pentecost. And it was like a mighty rushing wind. And he said, hey, works that I've done, but greater works ye shall do. Why? Because of that that spiritual birth, and because of the power of the Holy Ghost of God. Hey, hey, He gave us power to be the sons of God today. Let's go on just a little bit further here. I see our time's just about come and gone, but I'd like to read just a little bit more of God's Word here. Over here in the book of Ezekiel, He said, A new heart also I will give you a new spirit will I put within you and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh I'm glad that whenever whenever this new birth takes place I'm glad that God can reach in and I'm glad that he can take away this old black cold heart that 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 hates people all the time this old black cold heart that just has envy and malice and strife in it, always thinking of self. I'm glad that God can put a new heart. I'm glad that God can put a new heart. You hear me this afternoon? I'm glad that God can put a new heart. He, hey, this this man that that lives in the in the gutter and drinks every day of his life and everything. You know what? God can put a new heart in that man. This man that goes a, a, a cursing and, and blaspheming every day of his life and everything. You know what? God can take that old black stony heart out and He can put him a new heart in. And He can experience a new birth. Hey man, I'm glad. I'm glad that the message is still going out across the airways today where you must be born again. Hey, I remember Remember back years ago, whenever preachers like Jess Slagles would stand up and preach, amen, you must be born again. It got the job done then, and you know what? It'll still get the job done today. I remember whenever Brother uh, Robert Golan would come down here to the radio station, and he'd stand up behind this microphone, and he'd preach, amen. He'd preach, you must be born again. You know what? He got the job done then, and amen, and I still feel like it's a getting the job done today. I feel like I'm, uh, hey, that the Word of God's going out and touching, hey, amen, people's hearts and lives this afternoon and letting them realize that it takes a spiritual birth. It don't take some kind of social getting together, assigning your name to cards, amen, and having some kind of supper or some kind of get together, amen. I'm not into socialism. I'm into the new birth, amen. I'm into the new birth where through and by the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all unrighteousness. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that we can experience a new birth, amen, in this walk of life by what Jesus done on the cross of Calvary. Our most gracious Heavenly Fathers, we bow in Your presence. God, we thank and we praise You, God, that we can read, Lord, still in John chapter number 3, where it says You must be born again. Father, we realize today, Father, it's been over 30 years ago whenever You spoke to my heart and You let me realize that I needed that new birth. God, it still is good today and it just keeps getting better and better as life goes on. And Father, I thank You for that this afternoon. I thank You, God, that we can experience that each day in our life. I'm thankful, God, that You walked with us and talk with us. Amen. And you lead and guide and direct us down life's road and you you lighten our pathways. 
God, that we can see and not stumble and fall in this walk of life. God, I pray, Lord, that You'd take this broadcast. Lord, that You'd use it today, Lord, for Your honor, praise, and glory. For it's in Jesus' precious and holy name that we do pray. Amen.